Let's talk about something that almost nobody tells you when you start working on your potassium. It can take a lot longer to correct a deficiency than you might think. Even if you're eating more potassium-rich foods, using smart supplements, and fixing the obvious mistakes, full recovery, especially inside your cells, usually takes weeks and, in long-standing cases, months. There's a good reason for that, which I will get to in a second. And because fixing a deficiency is so important, I will also show you practical ways to speed things up. First off, low potassium is incredibly common. Modern diets are light on fruits, vegetables, potatoes, beans, and dairy, so the main potassium sources. Add in things like stress, heavy sweating, high sodium intake, alcohol, coffee, or certain medications, and many people fall short of what their body actually needs day to day. And when you don't get enough, it shows up in sneaky ways. Muscle weakness or cramps, fatigue, heart palpitations, constipation, higher blood pressure, and feeling tired but wired. Next to magnesium, potassium is the main mineral inside your cells. It helps generate nerve impulses, keeps muscles contracting smoothly, including your heart, helps regulate fluid balance, and plays a big role in carbohydrate metabolism. So it's definitely a big deal. Now, let's say you've realized that you're low or borderline in potassium and start increasing your intake. You might expect to feel better right away, and sometimes you do, but full replenishment is a different story. You see, less than 2% of your body's potassium is in your blood at any moment. The other 98% lives inside your cells, especially muscle cells and soft tissue cells. That means blood numbers can look fine while your tissues are still running on empty. Your body also manages potassium with a very tight control. Hormones like insulin and aldosterone shift potassium in and out of cells, and your kidneys decide how much to keep versus how much to dump. If you've been low for a while, your body adapts to that low level, so reversing those adaptations and restoring intracellular potassium takes consistency over time. Here's a simple way to think about your potassium turnover in different parts of your body. So first we have the blood and extracellular fluid, so the fluid outside of your cells. This has a very fast turnover and can change within hours. But it's a tiny pool size, so it doesn't tell you much about total body stores. Then we have soft organs like liver, gut, and others. This has a moderate turnover speed of a few days. When you improve these, you will see things like better digestion, more energy, and a steadier heart rhythm. Third, we have skeletal muscle, so this is the big reservoir. This takes weeks to a few months to replenish. As it refills, your cramps will fade, your strength returns, and your stamina improves. And lastly, we have whole body handling. So this is the, the handling process that I talked about before, so your kidney and hormonal balance. This is the slowest to normalize, especially in chronic cases, so it can take several months. Your kidneys gradually learn to waste less potassium over time and will help refill stores that way. So when people ask how long does it take to fix a potassium deficiency, the honest answer is that it depends on which compartment you're talking about. Again, blood levels within a few hours or a few days, organs and muscle function a few weeks to several months, and then the long-standing hormonal and kidney issues can take more than that. By the way, this is also why basic blood tests don't always capture the full picture for your electrolytes and a possible deficiency. Serum potassium is very tightly regulated and can miss the deeper shifts that we're talking about in this video. That's also why I prefer tissue tests over blood tests for most electrolytes, including potassium. I will link my favorite hair analysis in the description. Now, before we talk about how to speed things up in terms of replenishment, let's cut the leaks. So these are the biggest potassium drains. This includes things like diuretics, laxatives, regular vomiting or diarrhea, and very heavy sweating. A very high sodium intake is also not great, especially from processed foods that don't provide any other nutrients. Then we have alcohol and excess caffeine, and of course, chronic stress, because it triggers the release of aldosterone, which I talked about before, which favors sodium retention and potassium elimination. Okay, now on to how to speed up your potassium recovery. First of all, you want to prioritize high potassium foods. This really comes down to eating more vegetables, especially cooked ones, 
where accessing the minerals inside of them will be more easier because the cooking has already softened the vegetables to some degree. And fruit can definitely also help in normal amounts. Not every country has an RDA and sometimes they differ, but it's usually around 3,500 milligrams to 4,700 milligrams per day, so a fairly high intake. As for supplements, the most common forms are potassium chloride and potassium citrate. While both will help bring up low potassium levels, potassium chloride seems to be the more, the more reliable option, whereas potassium citrate is more often used to combat kidney stones. That means you usually want to go with potassium chloride. The problem is that the FDA in the US limits the supplements to under 100 milligrams per dose, which is why you will see so many products with 99 milligram capsules or tablets. The reason is that ingesting too much potassium at once can create serious health problems. The most common example would be things like heart arrhythmia, but this usually only happens if you have an existing kidney condition that hinders them from eliminating the excess potassium or if you take in a lot more than the recommended supplement dose all at once. Generally, if you decide to supplement, start with a small dose of around 100 to 300 milligrams of potassium and then work your way up and see how your body reacts. I wouldn't go over 1000 milligrams per day just from supplements and as always make sure to take it in several doses throughout the day so your body can filter out any excess potassium. To give you a realistic timeline and assuming that you're consistently upping your intake and reducing potassium losses, here's what could happen over the next few days, weeks and months. From days 1 to 7, blood potassium will stabilize, so fewer palpitations, feeling less edgy and better regularity. From weeks 2 to 6, you might see an improvement in muscle function, cramps and post-workout heaviness. And also your blood pressure might trend down as your sodium potassium balance improves. From month 1 to 6, the deeper intracellular repletion will happen, so more stamina and better recovery. Maybe even your sleep and stress resilience will improve. And then from month 6 to maybe even up to 24 months, this is where the important long-standing depletion will be corrected because now your body will fully be replenished and all tissues have access of plenty of potassium. So remember, feeling better in a few days doesn't mean you've fully repleted. It just means that the smallest, fastest pools are now topped up. Keep going until the bigger reservoirs, so mainly your muscles and especially inside the muscle cells are truly full again. That's when the benefits will stick. The bottom line is that a potassium deficiency isn't something that you fix overnight. You can definitely start feeling better quickly, but full intracellular recovery takes steady input and a bit of patience. So if you've been bumping up your potassium for a couple of weeks now and not feeling 100% yet, don't panic. It's definitely working. Your body is just refilling the tanks in the right order from fastest to slowest. Also, if you're using potassium to help with energy and improve your chronic fatigue, check out my recovery program in the description. It walks you through testing, balancing electrolytes, and of course, setting up your diet and supplement stack. It's a step-by-step -step program that goes into way more detail than my YouTube videos and includes the exact protocol that I used to get my energy back after I crashed. Again, everything will be linked in the description.